This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Blaine Fowler. What it is, BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wednesday, June 30th, yep, we've made it to the end of June, wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton. So pleased to be teamed up in studio with a guy who, unlike Jerem Jordan, actually played quarterback at BYU, Blaine Fowler. I, I appreciate that. You're referring to Spencer pretending he was a quarterback yesterday, right? Well, sometimes I like to pretend. Or, or not Spencer. I'm talking about Jerem pretending Jerem he was definitely likes to pretend. Spencer actually is not quite as big a stretch to pretend that he's a quarterback <laughs> as Jerem <laughs> pretending he was a quarterback. We, we, we had our big promotions day yesterday where we were all together all day long. Um, in fact, the athletes were up. Uh, the football team was up uh, doing a bunch of promotional shoots as well. We were... Uh, shooting commercials for all of our shows this fall and, and promos for all the upcoming shows that are coming during the fall and, and doing all that stuff yesterday. And Jerem was pretending to be. Yeah. Well, you give the guy a helmet and a football yeah. and some eye black, and then and this is what happens. Yeah. yeah. I'm playing quarterback this fall. We don't need three. We got one. No, I'm just kidding. We're doing a shoot for BYUSN here. All kinds of sports. Spence in the swim cap and goggles. Looks amazing, dude. I don't know how I got football. <laughs> <laughs> so he, if he's the quarterback, then we got problems. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, I'm projecting two wins for BYU football. Yeah, with Jeremy McCor- That was really fun yesterday. We got to spend the whole day together. Uh, they made me throw over and over and over again yes. balls to Spencer as part of one of the promotions we were doing. The only problem is they made me overthrow everyone on purpose. They wanted to be just out of his reach, which... I mean, honestly, Spencer, that's like asking Mozart, hey, could you do a symphony but make it bad? <laughs> um, uh, or, or, I don't know. Picasso to make yeah, an Picasso, ugly painting. Picasso, hey, can you do Well, Picasso, some are. They seem <laughs> ugly to me. But let's, let's say Monet, since I like Monet. But, okay. Hey, could you do an ugly painting? I was like, throw 50 balls and don't complete one? Yeah. I can't do that. Overthrow him every time, Blaine. Yeah, we did it. So we had to do it. We, we, we bought in. And I overthrew you like 50 straight yeah, times. It feels wrong. It was your worst passing performance in your lifetime, but purposeful. I was over 50. <laughs> I was over 50 yesterday. It was not good. Hey, we're starting out at least one for one today with this show lineup. College football insider and the man behind the most talked about preseason college football magazine year in and year out, Phil Steele, will join us. Why does he have BYU as the 50th best team in the country also name image and likeness pay the players give them the money that fun has already begun with a notable quarterback at a prominent program details on the way plus Kalani Satake does he deserve a top 25 head coaching spot in the rankings of all the guys in charge we'll start there with today's BYU Sports Nation headlines Well, Kalani Sataki ranked 46th among college coaches by the Sporting News in in a recent publication. All right. Uh, Kalani did improve his position by 40 spots from last year. So more respect from last year or from 2019. I don't know. 40? Or or anything about 46? Come on. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that. We're going to dive into Um, that. Other coaches on this year for for comparison um, that are on BYU's football schedule this year of note. Arizona State's coach Herm Edwards is at 34th. Bronco Mendenhall, Virginia's coach, at number 32. USC's Clay Helton checked in at 25. Utah's Kyle Whittingham at number 19. And another one of note, Coastal Carolina's coach um, Jamie Chadwell, who BYU got familiar with last year, uh, ranked 38th ahead of Kalani in this one. One great season at Coastal Carolina. So that's what I'm going, wait a minute here. Kalani had a good season. He's built this thing over six years. And, you know, Jamie's a good coach, but he jumps Kalani with one good season at Coastal. Mm. Mm, As long as UCLA is below BYU, I'm good. Yeah, and that and <laughs> there's my salvation. That's all that matters. Therein lies my that's, salvation. That's all that matters to you. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a. I think that's a little. Uh, I think it's a little low for Kalani with what he what he has to get done. All right, more on that coming up in the NBA. Elijah Bryant and the Milwaukee Bucks were blown out in Game Four against the Atlanta Hawks, one ten to eighty eight. 
the rash of injuries to NBA star players continues. In fact, right now, the best player for all four remaining teams, injured. Trey Young, Hawks, injured. Giannis Antetokounmpo, injured. Okay, Devin Booker, broken nose, injured. At least he can still play. And Chris play. Paul not looking right since he back came back from COVID yes. protocol for the yes. Suns, right? Kawhi Leonard, Clippers, injured. What is going on? It's a, tra- it's a, it's a battle of attrition. Survival of the fittest, I guess, in quite the NBA li- this year. Quite literally. Uh, yeah. The series now 2-2. Elijah Bryant did play four minutes Scored a couple of points on one for two shooting, but yeah, again, everything has been marred by injuries. We'll see what happens in game five. Maybe Eli will play if Giannis can't go. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, kudos, kudos to, to Elijah. He told us that he was going to make it, and he went out and did it. Good that's just him. that's just flat out work. We're really proud of Elijah and what he's done. So, and you're right, maybe with Giannis out, maybe he plays some more minutes. So, we'll watch and root for Elijah. So. Hey, Guard Young has been inducted into the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame All as right. a member yeah, of that 2004 Men's Olympic team. Go Guard, that is awesome. That 2004 team, you remember, ended a 20-year medal drought for the United States. They took a silver medal in the Athens Games. And so congratulations uh, to Guard Young uh, on that induction along with the USA Gymnastics team from 2004 into the Hall of Fame. What's crazy about the silver medal there is Guard's so nonchalant about it. He's like, yeah, I got it in a drawer somewhere in his office. Like, He let Jerem borrow it for a day and just carry it around campus. And I'm like, that's a silver medal. Low-key, low humble, and amazing track record and history yes. of accomplishment. But you would never know it by how humble and, and, and just chill that he is about all that, right? He's got well, that program on the rise on the women's side of BYU. Yeah, well-deserved honor for him personally. On to women's golf. Lila Naliai defeats Kirsten Fotu in a battle of BYU women's golfers in the round of 32. And Joby Einerson in the round of 16 at the Utah State Women's Amateur. Yeah, Miss Naliai is moving on. She finished with a uh, five-stroke lead rather over Fotu. One by six strokes against Einerson. Nale now faces Carissa Graft in the quarterfinals, where she is currently up eight strokes, Blaine, Man. after 14 holes. Now, does that mean that it's closed out? Or it, it's not? So it's stroke play. It's not win by the right, hole. Right, right. So it's not. It's not match okay. play. It's, it's not, not match, match play. play. Right, so well, I, I like her chances up eight strokes. Yeah, I think so. With I think so. four holes to play. So there we go. Uh, another former BYU golfer, Anna Kennedy, unfortunately also dipped out in the round of 32. But it's been fun to watch uh, BYU represent. It, it makes me want to go play. Right, like you and I. Yes, need to go play. It's long overdue. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. So. Uh, hey, in, in baseball news, Jackson Clough in the second game of his rehab assignment uh, with the FCL Nationals. He went one for two with a run scored. Uh, Daniel Scheman was promoted. And I love I, minor league baseball is my favorite because of the names, right? So, yes. so Scheman promoted from the single A Lake County Captains. Mm-hmm. Not such a crazy name. But he's going to the double A Akron Rubber Ducks. Yes. Squeak, the, squeak. The mighty Rubber Ducks. Quack, quack. And, uh, hey, Daniel's hitting 235, three home runs, 13 runs batted in so far in the year. Congratulations on the promotion up to double-A to the Rubber Ducks. Hey, Daniel, I want a Akron Rubber Duck hat for the BYU Sports Nation set. Do they? I want to know what the mascot is there. <laughs> is it like a guy in a Rubber Duck outfit and just I runs around? I have no idea. I mean, minor league baseball is, is Americana. It, it really is. I was just going to say that. It I is, love it. It is such a, an established part of Americana. Small small towns, and, and I absolutely love it. Great to have it back after it uh, had to sit out a year with COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's good to have that uh, portion of baseball back. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Top 50 team. When you think about that and how it relates to 130 Division I college football teams, you're like, okay, top 50, that's not bad. BYU, according to Phil Steele, who we will talk to in about 15 minutes, will finish the season ranked right at number 50 in his list of all 130 Division I college football teams. Okay, chew on that for a moment. Now let's bring back up the fact that Kalani Satake was ranked the 46th best coach out of 130, according to the Sporting News. Let's double barrel this thing, Blaine. Is BYU, by terms of where they're projected to finish as a team in 2021, and Kalani Satake being the 46th best head coach in the country, being undervalued and underrated by the national media? I'm, I'm going to say yes Ooh. on both counts. 
And and let and let's start with the first. I mean, I realize that people think um, that BYU is going to have a big drop off after losing the number two draft pick, right? So, and it, people put so much stock in the quarterback position, and rightly so. It's the most important position on the field. There's no question about that. Um, but I think people are underrating how good the other quarterbacks BYU has in the program are. Okay. And I think they're also underrating what comes back around those players. To me, over time, over the last 35 or 40 years, when I look at BYU, I start right up front on the offensive line when I'm looking at their offense. And if that is a big physical group that can dominate, establish the run, and protect the quarterback, I always feel good about how they're going to do regardless of who's playing quarterback. And, and they've got three really good guys competing for this job right now that I think can get the job done. Sure. And, and that group up front for BYU, you have seven offensive linemen with starting experience coming back. From I like BYU. what you're bringing up, Blaine. And, and I'm telling you, this is going to be a big, physical, nasty group. You complement that with a deep and talented receiving core. We're, we're – Puka and Samson Nakua have transferred in to bolster what was already a decent receiving core. So you add that to that, a very deep running back core with Katoa and Algier, who's, by the way, by Phil Steele, ranked a top 10. He's number nine okay. um, uh, with all running backs in the country. So you got a top 10 running back behind you. You have tight ends that are deep and big and very, very skilled. A headline by Isaac Rex. Dallin Holker's back from his mission. So you got two freshman All-American tight ends. That, that are there playing. I just think people are underrating. People think this offense is going to take a big step backward. I think they're going to be surprised. And and the defense lost some big stars, but that linebacking core that back that's back is, and a word that we only use when it's appropriate, it's an elite group of linebackers. Okay. And it is an elite group of corners. And so with that in mind, I think the defense is going to surprise. So, me, where would I put them? Yeah, where would you place them? I'd have them in about 35th, top 35, to start. And I believe they can outperform that, but I certainly wouldn't have them at 50. And maybe I know a little bit behind the scenes of what's going on, but I would have them no lower than 35 going into the season. Okay, so to start the season, you've got BYU at, let's say, 35 right off the bat. Phil Steele is projecting that BYU is going to finish 50th. Now I'm thinking about, okay, what type of record against that schedule loaded with seven power fives would earn a 50th overall ranking? Maybe like an eight and five, a seven and I, six? I think a seven and six against that schedule puts you in like a 50th rank. I don't know. Right. Okay. So, again, we're going to talk to him and ask him what went into him projecting number 50 at the end of the season. But I'm more in line with you, and we're tied into the program. We have access uh, to watch the players and talk with them. Like, I get it. Phil Steele has to do this for 130 teams. Yeah. He has to make projections where they'll finish on 130 separate accounts. So he gets a pass there a little bit. But the thing that's working against that number, as you pointed out, is several solid position groups coming back around the quarterback. So much is being heaped on the fact that Zach Wilson left. Okay, I don't, Honestly, I don't care who starts against Arizona in week one. Whoever it is, Baylor Romney, Jacob Conover, Jaron Hall, BYU is going to win the game because they have awesome running backs. They have a loaded wide receiver group, incredible tight ends, an experienced offensive line coming back, and the defense is going to be better, specifically at linebacker and corner, than most people are anticipating it to be. Overall, Blaine, I'm, I don't care who starts quarterback – I like BYU to win against Arizona and compete for sure when they open up their home campaign in what's going to be a raucous environment against Utah on September 11th. So you and I are in agreement. And, and to touch on the Kalani point, when, when you look at the, the rankings, I noticed in, in this list that Sporting News put out, a lot of SEC loaded at the top. And to me, when I'm looking at co- uh, coaches and rating these coaches, I think – not about what program they're coaching. I think about what do they do with the resources they have and the limitations. Yeah. For that reason alone, you know, guys like Kalani Sataki, Hugh Freeze at Liberty, I think they both deserve to be a lot higher on that list than they currently are. Okay. For Kalani, number 46, the thing that's working against him is that the national pundits are looking for consistency. Okay, he went 9-4 and four his first season. Then had the worst season in 50 years in BYU in 2017, seven and six, seven and six, and then the breakout year, 11 and yep. one. But it was against uh, an asterisk schedule because of the COVID stuff. If Kalani Sataki can piece together a nine-win season against this schedule, 
Now we're talking. Yep. Now, now it's validated now as him being like a top 30, top 35 coach in college football. Right on. I'm with you. I'm with you. So. Okay, here we go. On we move to our question of the day because we want your opinions now that you've heard ours. Who's more underrated? BYU as Phil Steele's 50th projected final ranking team or Kalani Satake as the current 46th best college football coach, according to the Sporting News. What do you think is more egregious? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from Greg W. Price on Instagram. Definitely Coach Satake. National media consistently underappreciate the unique challenges a coach at BYU has to face. Amen. That's he's right in line with what I was saying right there. To rise to that challenge like Kalani has done is worthy of top 30. I'm, I'm with you, Greg. I'm with Greg on that one right All there. right. Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, wherever you feel like chiming in. Let's keep it rolling, Blaine. All right. Coming up, BYU's fan base named the best in Utah. Oh, snap. Shots fired across the bow at the people wearing anything but royal blue. And Phil Steele, as promised. Why does he have BYU ranked? Number 50 in his final projected rankings. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us Friday for a BYU Sports Nation special, a decade of independence, (laughs) where we look back at 10 years of football independence with AD Tom Homo, Plus, give our top 10 players of independence. Watch or listen this Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV or BYU Radio. I laugh because I'm thinking about the fife and drum music that is heavily involved in that (laughs) decade of independence show. You you need a fife and drum. And, uh, and, 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 And it's interesting that, you know, we talk about independence and were we thought it was going to go and, and were it's led. And really the pinnacle of their independence year was last year when they didn't yes. play any P5s because yes. the schedule changed. We thought it was going to be 2014 when Taysom Hill started an early Heisman campaign. BYU was ranked number 18. They were 4-0 and and then the injury yeah. against Utah State derailed all of that. So you're right. The, the crown jewel of independence thus far in terms of performance has been 2020. Now, for BYU with no conference – Rankings matter so much. Like, that's the number one indicator of, are you relevant? Last year, clearly, BYU was relevant. They finished ranked for the first time since 2009, number 11, just outside the final top 10. And we're thinking, okay, schedule ramps up, seven power fives, some pretty good G5s on the schedule this year, and no Zach Wilson. Man, what kind of a mini miracle is it going to take for BYU to finish ranked? Or is it a mini miracle, Blaine? And, and I look at it this way. And you, you and I just in, in our first uh, segment talked about what they've got coming back offensively. And I think they're better defensively than people are going to give them credit for. I don't think people know who their corners are coming back. And I think BYU is going to be able to play a lot more man next year and be aggressive defensively because they can flat out cover. So, so I think this team's going to outperform most people's expectations. Um, maybe not yours and mine, but most people's. Okay. Um, I said this a couple of weeks ago uh, on the show. That this reminds me of '84, um, where although '84's team was getting a little more respect, and it was because BYU was consistently ranked. Sure, right? you're coming off so a season time. where you were number seven in the country with yep. Steve Young, right? And so, so we'll, we'll get back to that. We've got we've got Phil Steele joining us now, oh, yes. and uh, and we we want to get with Phil right away while we've got him here, and we'll come back to that discussion in just a second. Okay, Spencer. on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, the man, the myth, the legend, the insider of college football, producing. The always heavily talked about Phil Steele college football previews joining us. Phil, nice to have you back on the program. How are you? You know, I am doing great. So much better than last year at this time, guys, when we were wondering if we are even going to play a football season. And who who, who knew what BYU's schedule was going to be last year at this time? So, so much better in uh, 2021. Not very many teams benefited from COVID. And and I'm not going to say it wasn't a grind for BYU as well as they tested every other day all season long and had guys in and out and coaches in and out. So it's tough for everybody. But did any team benefit more from the COVID season than BYU last season? No, and you know, the the perfect irony of it was uh, usually I'd uh, talk to Coach Sataki and I'll talk to him for an hour, hour and a half. And at the end of the conversation, we were just about to hang up last year. He goes, you know, Phil, we don't play the schedules we used to play at BYU. 
And I, I was like, okay, see you, coach. And I'm like, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't really thought about that. And then, boom, they played the type of schedule they used to play. And look at what BYU did, a fantastic season and dominating almost every opponent down the stretch. So it was uh, it was his best team ever, experience-wise. They played the schedule. There was a dream schedule. And if not for some game scheduled two days in advance where they have to fly to the East Coast and prepare for an option offense, uh, they would have easily have run the table last year. Phil Steele is on BYU Sports Nation. You brought up Coach Satake. We were just talking about the sporting news ranking all 130 college football coaches. They have Kalani at number 46. Both Blaine and I here feel like that might be a little bit too low, but again, we're tied into the program. We see him on a day-to-day basis relatively, and uh, there may be some bias there too because the show is called BYU Sports Nation. But, (laughs) Phil, where would you rank Kalani Sataki? Do you feel like 46 is maybe undervaluing him a little bit or where it needs to be? Well, there are there are a lot of good head coaches in college football. I mean, there's only 130 spots available, and most of the guys in there are outstanding. But uh, I, I thought with the job he did last year, uh, clearly I would have put him top 40. I don't know if I have him in the top 20 quite yet. I'd like to see a few more years like last year strung together. Uh, but definitely, uh, I would if you're giving me an over under on that ranking, I would go uh, better, a uh, higher number than that. Better Agreed. number. Agreed with that, Phil. Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you now, for validating and, no, us, and, Phil. And we, and we agree with you 100% on the fact that now they have to have this consistent pattern. You want to be considered Lavelle Edwards, you have to have a consistent pattern of winning and not just have it be once in a while. So, so, so we're with you on that one. Yeah, we didn't have him in our top 20, but we just thought 46 with what he deals with and the limits that he had was maybe just yes. a little bit low at this point. So let, let's talk about BYU's ranking. Um, we know you, you give a power ranking, but you also talk about where you see these teams finishing, which I love that thought prospect. When the thing's all said and done, this is where I see uh, these teams. And we always love to go to that, that section of your, of, of the, of your, um, per, uh, uh, your magazine. And you have BYU finishing at 50 this year. Talk about what went into that thought um, and, and why. I, in our minds, we're like, whoa, why so, why so low? But again, of course, this is BYU Sports Nation, right, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the one thing about this year, guys, and the, the one thing that was consistent in talking, I, I talked to a little over 110 of the 130 head coaches this year. Uh, almost every head coach this year was talking about their experience level. You know, Phil, we're, we went three deep in the spring. We are so loaded with experienced players. Everybody's got 16, 17, 18, 19 returning starters coming back. Give you an example. You go to the Pac-12 and, and Colorado. Uh, Colorado's got 16 returning starters this year. Now, normally that puts you number two or number three in the conference. That's actually the second fewest returning starters in the Pac-12. So everybody has got experienced teams this year. And meanwhile, BYU lost some players. They only have 11 returning starters coming back. They lose the uh, second overall pick in the draft at quarterback. So it's a it's an inexperienced squad. But then the other part's the schedule. And you, it's factored in. And, and generally when I'm doing the ranking, guys, it's in the last second two last two days of the magazine and I'm looking at my nine sets computer rankings and they're all melded together and I'm going for top wins and losses and uh, that's I want to make sure that the my top 40 are all in bowl games my top 45 top 50 are even all in bowl games uh, they do have to play USC on the road this year uh, I would have an underdog in that game the Georgia Southern game is a tricky one because that's the option offense and uh, they're tough Washington State's going to be a much improved team this year Baylor's going to be a vastly improved team last year uh, both those teams had first-year head coaches last year that didn't have the benefit of spring practice and were drastically changing their schemes. I think those two will be much tougher. Boise is not going to be an easy test. Andy Envelo stepping into a good situation there. And then Utah and Arizona State are probably the top two of the top three teams in the Pac-12 this year. BYU could very well be underdogs in both of those games. So I didn't quite see them getting back to the double-digit wins this year with that schedule and the experience level that they have. But uh, in the power poll, we've got them ranked higher. Yeah, that's what we, we noted that in the power poll. You had, had them a little bit higher, and, and you've got some of their position players ranked really high. You had Tyler Algier, uh, their returning running back, 1,000-yard rusher, is the number nine draft-eligible 
running back in the country. You've got uh, James Empey at number seven, their center, number seven center in the country. Um, you got the kicker, Jake Oldroyd, uh, at number four, and their overall special teams ranked in, as, as a top 10 special teams unit in, in, in the country. So, hey, we, we know you gave them a little bit of, bit of, bit of love, Phil, and, and you even stated in, in your article that maybe BYU would outperform. There's a g- good possibility they could outperform uh, projections. What do you see as their biggest strength going into this season? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd have to say uh, two areas, uh, running back, uh, as you mentioned with Algier, I mean, he's a guy that moved over from linebacker at the end of two years ago, had a really good final three games, and then last year, once he came on, he was just dynamic. He averaged 7.5 yards per carry, rushed for over 1,000 yards, and then they've got uh, Katoa behind him, and Katoa's another guy that uh, could very well work himself into an NFL camp by the by the end of his career, and then the offensive line. I mean, the offensive line has got... Uh, three returning starters, but uh, they are deep. Going over the team with Coach Sataki, uh, I had question marks in a lot of different areas. And he, I would say, like on the defensive line, for example, I'd say, you know, I'm really concerned about this area. He's like, I'm not as concerned about it, Phil. I feel pretty good about it. So, uh, But the, the two areas is the best strengths, I would have to say. Offensive line, running back, and then uh, perhaps linebacker would be the uh, the best unit on the defense. Okay, you maybe just brought it up as we look at the other end of this conversation, and that is what is the biggest perceived weakness or biggest question mark for BYU? Is it the quarterback replacing Zach Wilson, or is it the defensive line? Uh, those would be my two biggest areas. And and like I said, I told Coach Sataki, I go, I'm very concerned about this defensive line. And then he said, he's not. And he likes, he likes the three deep of it and thinks they're going to play extremely well and be very close to last year. Uh, we'll wait and see, but he's been correct in the past in some of the things he's told me. Very correct, you know, more so, and he knows his team extremely well. The quarterback situation, I, I think they've got three good candidates there. Conover, Hall, and Romney, all solid guys. I think they're going to put up good stats, but they're not going to put up uh, Zach Wilson stats this year. I mean, 33 touchdowns, three interceptions, 74% completions. That's not going to happen. So both areas would be a concern, but once again, Coach Sataki doesn't think they're going from a strength to a weakness. They just might not be as strong as last year. I noted, Phil, that you, as you listed the quarterbacks, you had Jacob Conover's name listed first as, as a projected guy there. Uh, give us the thought process behind the youngster being the guy that gets the nod. Well, he's a guy that came into the spring, and uh, you know he's got a live arm, a great playmaker, and he had a really good spring. And uh, you know, Jaron Hall was there, Bray Romney was there, but I like it when a, a freshman quarterback comes in and produces in the spring because their upside's higher. You know, the, the more reps they get, the better it is. So I just gave him the, the higher upside of the three, and I'm, I'm thinking that when the fall rolls around, he'll end up winning that job. Phil Steele is on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, let's go back to rankings because all BYU fans, especially as an independent, want to know how to remain relevant, and that is largely tied into the top 25. So looking at that schedule, and you went through a gauntlet of really tough opponents for BYU. What type of record in the 12-game regular season would BYU have to post to have a legitimate shot at finishing for a second consecutive year in the top 25? Uh, probably nine. I think nine would definitely put you in the top 25 against that schedule this year, uh, you know, because there would be some upsets along the way. Playing the top three teams out of the Pac-12 South and USC, Utah, and Arizona State, all three teams I think will enter uh, potentially double-digit wins this year. That right there sets it up well. And then, as I mentioned, Baylor and Washington State are much better than people give them credit for. Uh, Bronco Mendenhall coming back to BYU on October 30th. He's not wild about that, by the way. Uh, they play they play Boise State uh, at home. I think if they get to nine wins, I'm putting them in the top 25. And you know they've they've got seven P5s on this schedule. How many of those do they have to win? I mean, and and are they allowed to lose to anybody other than a P5? So, you know, what what do you expect then to go against those seven? Yeah, I you know, and the thing is. Normally, when I do the uh, magazine, I spend about, uh, it takes about three to four weeks for the magazine to hit the uh, the newsstands. And in that time, I go through every game on the schedule and have, whether I have the team favored or underdog. So far, I'm only through five games with BYU. I've got them an underdog against Utah and Arizona State. Slight underdog, not a big underdog in either game, but a slight underdog. So, so far, I've got them down with 
two losses, but I haven't finished the rest of the schedule yet. I, I'm, more, I'm on week six right now, so it's going to take me a little bit of time. The, the good news is going exclusively to Barnes & Noble and Books A Million like we did this year, in the past it would take three to four weeks to hit the, the magazine's places. Barnes & Noble, Books A Million had them on the shelf about a week after we went to the press. So that's been the big advantage of going exclusive this year. But unfortunately it's put me a little behind in my overall estimation. So when I look at a matchup, I like to look at everything. I like to look at the, how the teams match up against each other, the series history, the location, the situation, all that stuff involved. So off the cuff, I can't really give you a number until I actually go through each matchup. Yeah, but, total, totally well, we, we get if it, they, we get it. But, they, nine, but nine wins if, is the watermark for a top 25 in your oh, mind. I like yeah, that. And yeah. I, don't, I don't care who you beat and who you lose to. Because if you lose three bad games, but you beat Utah, Arizona State, and USC, <laughs> you're going to be in the top still 25, yeah. okay? Yeah. So it doesn't matter which nine. Give me nine wins, and I'll put you in the top 25. Sure. There, there may be go. some serious question marks about uh, what's going on against the lesser opponents if you're beating those three, but that's a <laughs> conversation and discussion for another day. Okay, let's just have some fun. With, I know you haven't gone through game by game as far as like who should be favored and, and who shouldn't be, but if you had to pinpoint the toughest opponent on BYU's schedule right now, who is the toughest team that BYU is going to face in 2021? Uh, and once again, you have to factor in home and away. So I'm going to use at USC on November the 27th. Uh, the, I would put USC, Utah, Arizona State, all very close talent-wise. But BYU gets Utah at home and they get Arizona State at home. They have to travel to face USC. And they have to. it's going to be their second straight road trip, and they're coming off facing the option of Georgia Southern. I'm never wild about facing the option well, one week and then playing the next week because of all the cut blocking and things that go on. So I think that is going to be their toughest game on the schedule would be at USC this year. Phil, we've got uh, our copy of your college football preview sitting on the desk with us. It is always an enjoyable read. So much information. You mentioned a couple of ways that uh, fans, BYU, and college football fans in general can get it. Uh, What's the fastest way to get that information if they don't have it right now? Yeah, the best way to get the magazine, it's 352 pages. It's like getting 130 different media guys rolled into one. Uh, is to go to a Barnes & Noble or a Books A Million. And if you go to Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, you have it today in your hands, no shipping, no handling, no anything else, and you got the, the best magazine out there. It's heavy, it's thick, but if you can't get to a Barnes & Noble or Books A Million, then go to the website, philsteel.com. When you go to philsteel.com, we ship them out two-day FedEx, so they'll get there probably – Give us a day to process it, two days to ship FedEx. You'll have it in your hands in three days. And it'll take you about two months to read through one, but uh, it's well worth it. It's something you refer to all season long. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, awesome. can, we can attest to that now for sure. And we're all excited about football season, Phil. Fans in stands, football is back. Oh, love it. I love it. That is uh, such a huge thing, and, and I, I can't wait to see the crowds again. It's great to talk to you, Phil. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks for having me on. A lot of fun talking football with you guys today. You thanks, Phil. It. College Football Insider Magazine producer Phil Steele on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. There you go. Hey, coming up, Jerem's 10 in 10 quarterbacks edition. I'm interested to get your take yeah, well, on we'll how see. these rank. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> and who's the best BYU sidekick of all time? The best Robin to the Batman. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Welcome back to Studio B. He is the one and only Blaine Fowler. I am Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation. You know what we should do right now? Whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. So, Spencer, with with the recent court ruling that athletes should be able to take advantage and monetize their image and likeness. You know, in the past, the NCAA has been able to control all that. Like, you you can't go sell a shirt that says Spencer Linton on it. Well, you can because you work for BYU TV. (laughs) But an NCAA athlete could not in the past do that. They've opened up the door for athletes to be able to monetize yes. this kind of stuff. A Wisconsin quarterback Graham Mertz has filed to register a logo trademark okay. that he intends to use with the sale of clothing. He's got so his own logo. He's going to be in the apparel line, right? So um, my, my question for you is if you're a college athlete, 
and you're looking forward to this NIL, uh -huh. called Name, Image, and Likeness, what would be your first move to take advantage of the new opportunities? Uh, I just would want to take advantage of all of the offers that fans and people give to me that I'd had to previously say no to. I want free meals. I want free golf. I want a car to drive around. Like, I would go take advantage of Wait, does it go that far? Can they get a, can they get a car now? Hey. Like so if they they can be a spokesperson can, for that's a my thing. can I be can and can they give me a car back? Ooh, Ooh. okay. So that's a so I'd probably yeah, you know I'd probably go that I want to be like a spokesperson. Car dealership for Maserati. Can I <laughs> or Tesla? Yeah. Can I can I go be a spokesperson for a local car dealership and drive a sweet ride and go play free golf and eat free meals after? That's what I want to do. What, you want to know what? I'll tell you this. It's at least nice that if you got something with your name on it. That somebody else isn't making the money on it, right? Yes. That they they can't sell your jersey and you not have some stake in that. Yeah, you can put and, names on the back of the jerseys now. Yeah, like let's personalize these things in yeah. in the BYU store. And, and can I do can I do a uh, if I'm still playing? Can I do a Blaine Fowler passing camp now in the summer? And have a yeah. bunch of people come and yes. pay and do, I mean I hope so. That would be amazing. Yeah. So yeah, make well, money. For, for, for too many years, the NCAA, and this is, one, this is one move that I agree with. I agree with the courts 100%. NCAA has controlled the ability of athletes. And it's not that athletes haven't been paid. They, they get a good education, and they get their expenses paid for while they're here. But for too long, the NCAA has made millions, if not, if we do it over time, billions of dollars on players' likenesses and, and, and all of this marketing of merchandise that, that goes around. And so... Hey, I'm, I'm all for this, uh, but my big question is, how are they going to control this? Yeah. Right? Hey, Coach, sorry I'm yeah. late for practice. I was busy earning money at the local car dealership or making a billboard. Like, how, how are you going to figure that into the schedule? That's yeah. where it gets kind of weird, no, I right? I know, I know, I know. BYU basketball very much is aware of the name, image, and likeness transition that is happening across the country. And knowing Mark Pope, they plan to take full advantage of, uh, advantage of it with all of the businesses on the Silicon Slopes in Provo, Air, Utah oh, yeah. area, right? Okay. Right. So they continue to be in contact with or in the running with various basketball transfers yeah, still out there. Bunch of them still, yeah. Do you expect Mark Pope to land another high-profile transfer this season, maybe with an NIL twist? I don't know if they even need the NIL twist, but that's going to help, right? But I, I think the answer is yes. And, and here's why. I don't know that there's anyone better in the country right now at attracting talented transfers. Uh, Mark has been able to do a phenomenal job of selling the culture of this program to not only players, but to players' parents. Where, where he sits down with them and says, this is what we're all about. This is what we're going to do yes. uh, for your son. Uh, he's going to come out here. He's going to be part of this family. We're going to take him, and we're going to help him grow on the basketball floor and off the basketball floor, and he's going to leave here with an experience that's going to last a lifetime. And if he's good enough, we're going to prepare him for the NBA yes. or to play in Europe. And he's got a great message going, and people are believing. And the, you know how we were talking about, hey, Kalani needs to have a couple of seasons in a row, right, for people to just give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, in recruiting, now Mark's had more than a couple seasons. You know, he's had a couple seasons in a row. People are going, we believe this is a legitimate top 20 program. And the way he runs it is so fun. And the culture is so good to be a part of. That's where I want to go. So I'm saying, yeah, he's going to okay. get another one. Okay. I'm saying he's going to yeah. get another one. What do T you think? T. John Lucas, yeah, come, come join the fold. All BYU does is get single-digit seeds and go to the NCAA tournament with all this transfer madness. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. All right, question for you. Yesterday, Colin Coward ranked his top 10 sports sidekicks of all time. I love right? that topic. So yes. who's the best BYU sidekick of all time? You you teased it by saying who's Robin to Batman. Who's the best BYU sports sidekick of all time? Holy cow. Man, I think I'm going to go back to your era, Blaine. Yes, I like this. Okay. Don't forget about my era. Yes. I mean, even you... though it's getting gray right here, don't forget us. No. And... The BYU quarterbacks were unbelievable. That, that run from 1974 to 1985, a little break, and then Ty Detmer. That was just remarkable, okay? In the middle of that, Steve Young. I finished second on the Heisman. He was incredible. Would have been the number one NFL pick if had he not opted to go to the USFL. You know all about him. What about his sidekick, Gordon Hudson? Oh, yeah. Hall, Hall, Hall of, of Fame Famer. tight end with Steve Young. And that was that, that matchup or that combo 
was magic. Gordon Hudson played that only eight magic. games in 83 because he was injured and still was a first-team All-American. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm – hey, I like that one. I like that a lot. What about Jimmer and Jackson in basketball? Amazing. Yeah. I was thinking Jimmer and Jackson in basketball. Yeah, if you're going to pick Jimmer and Jackson – Or they're... or can we go all the way back to my time again? And Can we go – Danny Ainge and Fred Roberts, but then we got to throw Greg Kite in there and Steve Trumbo in there. They're, they're more balanced, Craig. right? Yeah. So, so there's just a lot of sidekicks on that one. So I'm going to go Jimmer and Jackson. Love that. Love so. that answer. All right. Well, coming up today's rise and shout out. And as promised, Jerem Jordan ranks the top ten quarterbacks BYU's defense will face in 2021. Does Blaine agree with it? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tune in Monday at noon Eastern time to catch another airing of BYU football, a history of offensive innovation. You can watch or listen on BYU TV or BYU radio. Do you have an opinion on that, Blaine? Yes, I have an opinion. (laughs) Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. It is time for Jerem's 10 in 10. 10 lists in 10 weeks. This week it is the top 10 quarterbacks BYU's defense will face in 2021. Presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Hit it! Ten lists in ten weeks. It's Jerem, 10 and 10. All right, there are several quarterback battles that have been undetermined and will go into fall camp. So where there isn't a front runner, notably at Arizona, South Florida, Washington State, and Georgia Southern, that made this list more difficult. So I chose who I thought might win so that uh, there's one quarterback per school, two left off, Idaho State and Georgia Southern. Number 10, Jacob Zeno, Baylor. Jeff Grimes has to pick a dude to replace Charlie Brewer, who put up the second best stats in program history behind Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III. 6'1", 207, sophomore, big arm, made a few great passes in the 2019 Big 12 title game. Only four games played, one touchdown, one pick total. Number 9, Jarrett Garantano, Washington State. Remember him at Tennessee in 2019? Familiar face. Grad transfer. Lost his job as a senior, so he outy. Threw six TDs and a 2-5 and five start last year. Injured his hand on the first play of the spring game at Wazoo. 32 starts in Knoxville. We'll see if he wins that job. Number eight, Cade Fortin, South Florida. UNC transfer. Played in two games before his shoulder injury. Only upperclassman among the USF quarterbacks. His last significant time was in 2018 at UNC, where he started two games as a freshman. Sat out 2019, then played two games in 2020. Head coach Jeff Scott says Fortin's improvement is, quote, really incredible. Number seven, Jordan McLeod, Arizona. We'll see if he wins this job because uh, Will Plummer and Gunnar Cruz are in the mix as well. But uh, starting quarterback Grant Gunnell transferred to Memphis, South Florida transfer. Uh, 411 snaps last year for the Bulls, 64.4 PFF grade. 21 touchdowns in his career, 10 interceptions in two years in Tampa. Had a terrible game against BYU in 2019. It ended up being the winning quarterback in that one. We'll see if he's the starter for Arizona uh, in game one against BYU. Number six, Brennan Armstrong, Virginia. This is Robert and I's guy. 6'2", 215, the lefty says he thinks the Cavs can be the best offense in the ACC. I think he forgot Clemson exists. 17 games played in his career, 20 touchdowns, 13 picks. He can run it too, four and a half yards carry, 645 yards, and five touchdowns on the ground. Number five, Logan Bonner, Utah State. New head coach Blake Anderson brought his quarterback from Arkansas State with him to Logan. He's expected to win the job. Bonner sat out spring injured, however. He's got great experience, beat Kansas State in Manhattan last year. 24 games played, 30 touchdowns, nine picks. Grad transfer who has two years to play too, although he's been banged up a little bit the last couple of seasons. Number four, Hank Bachmeyer, Boise State. First year OC Tim Plow opened up the quarterback competition with Bachmeyer and Sears, but I think Bachmeyer wins the job. Uber talented. 11 and 2 as a starter, but injuries have affected him greatly. PFF grade of 76 in 2020. Eight offensive starters return around him, including George Helani at running back and Khalil Shakir and CT Thomas at wide end. Number three, Charlie Brewer, Utah. Transfer from Baylor, second most yards, 9,765 touchdowns ever at Baylor. That's behind Robert Griffin III. Had a 91 grade from PFF in 2018, then an 81, and then a 63 the last two years. He will technically have to beat out Cameron Rising, who was the 2020 season starter for being hurt 14 snaps in. Former South Carolina quarterback Jake Bentley transferred to South Alabama. I think Charlie Brewer is the guy at Utah. Number two, Jaden Daniels, 
Arizona State. Best dual threat BYU will face this year. He limits mistakes. He can run it too. 6.8 yards per carry and four touchdowns in 2020. Just the four games though. 60% passer in two years. 8.6 yards per attempt. 22 touchdowns, three picks. He's very efficient. Although he doesn't stretch it down the field with a big arm per se. Seven rushing touchdowns. If he has to shoulder the offensive load, it will be hard though for Arizona State. And the top quarterback BYU will face on the 2021 schedule is Keaton Slovis at USC. As a freshman in 2019, he took third in the country in completion percentage. Did lose to BYU in overtime, as you recall. As a sophomore, he led the Trojans to a 5-0 record in the regular season. First team all Pac-12, led the league in every major passing category. 320 yards a game as well, six in the country. And four-star local product from Corner Canyon High School, Quarterback Jackson Dart is behind him, so we'll see if Dart gets some playing time. And those are the top 10 quarterbacks BYU will face on the 2021 schedule. Jerem Jordan's 10 in 10. 10 weeks, 10 lists. As he mentioned, the top 10 quarterbacks BYU will face. Okay, we have a few questions yeah, yeah. about we, this list. Like Blaine. Garantano from Washington State, he has it number nine. Number nine below yeah, South it, Florida's so, quarterback? So, so I, I just feel like he's a couple of spots underrated. Yes, right? so he, he, should, he should be up around six or up. seven. And hey, Jerem did a good job because we don't have like dramatic. I think that maybe Brandon Armstrong for Virginia, he's got him number six. Maybe he should move up a spot in front of Logan Bonner, who's okay. unproven, and move him back to, to six. And then Hank Bachmeyer, I think, is maybe I know he's got him as his number four. But Hank Bachmeyer, when he's healthy, is a really good player, and he knows that system. He, he just hasn't him. been healthy very he's, much. He's never been healthy. If, if, if Hank Bachmeyer is healthy, he's in that top three. He's right up there, maybe just slightly behind Jaden Daniels. And, and Charlie Brewer, to me, I look at film on him from a couple years ago, and I go, this dude is ridiculous, right? And he's going to be great. But then he tailed off at Baylor, and now he transfers. He's got to be in a new offense. So I am I think Charlie Brewer is going to be good, but I'm a wait and see. I think Hank Bachmeyer is more of a proven commodity. Um, Charlie Brewer may surprise me big time, but I'd switch those two. I'd put Hank Bachmeyer in front okay. of Charlie Brewer. I agree with his top two. Jaden Daniels is dynamic as they come. He, he's the guy that you cover everybody on third and 15, and he just runs and gets a first down and drives you out of your mind. <laughs> and he's very accurate, and he's smart with the football. I really like Jaden Daniels. And Keaton Slovis is a solid performer performer with all kinds of talent around him. Yes. So not huge disagreements with Jaron, but a, f- a few I think we could, you know, maybe switch around a little. Right. Underrated Washington State quarterback and Hank Bachmeyer, I think he needs to move up a spot. Keaton Slovis, uh, it's become famous over the past few weeks, called Provo weird. So maybe okay. it gets weird in L.A. and BYU pulls a stunner. We are a peculiar people here, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So, hey, coming up, Elite Voice. And how about a rise and shout out to a bunch of behind the scenes people that do an incredible job promoting BYU athletics and the programs that cover BYU athletics. Details on the way on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or you can download the podcast, uh, podcast. you just Google BYU Sports. I always do this. I say this, I always do this. BYU Sports Nation podcast. I fit in. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. You're Thank not, you. You're not much. alone in that. Just all you do is I you do this. <laughs> you just do this. That's how you Google, in case you guys are wondering. You Google that way. <laughs> Our question of the day Who's more underrated? BYU as a team, as Phil Steele's 50th projected final ranking team, or Kalani Satake as the 46th best head football coach in college football, according to the Sporting News. Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Mad Eye Cosmo in on Twitter. Quote, I'd have to say the BYU team ranking. I feel by the end, BYU football will finish in the low 30s. Well, there you go. My blue goggle take will end the season ranked, which would be back-to-back years. Wow, that would be great. That Hashtag be great. 66 days, by the way. I like it. I like it. Okay, today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. 
hey, we've got some amazing marketing teams, BYU Athletics and BYU Broadcast. Yeah, we spent our whole day yesterday with the folks behind the scenes, just propping us up and making us look good. And uh, we're grateful for everybody behind the scenes on all of our shows and all the promotions that do such a great job. But uh, athletics marketing and uh, BYU TV marketing, thanks for a great day and for taking care of us, right? Absolutely. Well deserved. Our thanks to today's guest, Phil Steele, who gave a wealth of information. Fun to talk with him about why he had BYU number 50. Yeah, and our apologies again to Dennis Pitta. I don't know. We always run out of time. We ran out of time again today. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Blaine, I am Spencer. Let's do this again tomorrow, shall we? Yes, do it again. Shout out to Steve Heyman. And on BYU Sports Station tomorrow, the Jimmer. Go Cougs.